Hello traders, Gary Wagner here just after 8.30 in Honolulu, 2.30 in New York on Friday. Happy Aloha Friday as we say on the islands. 8th day of August 2014 and this is uh, the daily report for gold and silver, our weekend review. Now we are coming to you a little early with the market still open, having about three hours to trade. We are under a tropical storm watch after a hurricane did hit the big island but has absolutely been downgraded and now really all we're facing coming up is some dramatic winds but because of those winds I could lose power at any time so I thought I'd put out a report before or if the power goes out. We currently do have gold trading down today. It's off about three dollars, uh, 1309.75. Now the low 1304.20, the high 1323.80. That's significant. We'll talk about that in a second. Silver trading in essence unchanged, currently down one tick or one cent on the day. The low 1973, the high 2025, current print 1991. More on silver towards the end of the show. So traders, in the limited time that we do have today, because winds are really starting to kick up here in Honolulu, Hawaii, want to kind of recap what we're looking at. Of course, we did enter a long position. We entered a long position last week in gold. We are flat or with no position in silver. Now, the position that we entered was right here on this green candle because it was my belief at that point that what we were really looking at was the conclusion of a minor second wave, that second wave being composed of an A, a B, and a C type progression. That also was following a minor wave one and that would be right here and that wave one could have been something like one I forget how my count was but two three four and really this fourth is really a compression right in here four and then five culminating at this top and this top being a high what about uh, 31 I believe or could have been even as high as 40 on this particular top, excuse me, 45 on this top, 31 was on this top here. Now that is all part and parcel of what I believe is really the beginning of a impulse wave, and that impulse wave is an intermediate third wave, and I believe that this right here is our intermediate third wave, intermediate second wave, and of course, the large rally that we experienced end of last year, beginning of this year, was the intermediate first wave. Best way is either to look at that is either to compress this chart or to just bring up a weekly one second. And so traders, I've just basically compressed this chart. Of course, we've been looking at it on a couple of other charts all week. But just to kind of bring everybody up to the same page, we had a dramatic fall from grace and we hit the second of two double bottoms. Second of two double bottoms culminating really at the end of last year, beginning of this year when the market hit 1180. From 1180, we went into a dynamic about $200 rally, 1180 up to 1391, a little bit over $200. And it is my belief or take that that was an intermediate one. Now, from that intermediate one, of course, we had this market trade lower, culminating at a low that was above this prior low. So we had a low of about 1240 here, 1183. And my sense was that was pretty much the conclusion of this wave two down. Now, it is also my belief that following that, we started an intermediate, and to show you how it's an intermediate, we will pull up the weekly in a second, but an intermediate wave three. That's just beginning to form because my sense is on that intermediate wave three, we've seen our first part one, our second part two, I believe we are in our third part three, we will get a four, and then a concluding fifth. Now, for this model to hold some truth, a couple of things have to happen. First of all, we have to culminate or terminate the end of this fifth wave has got to be above that of wave one. In other words, if we have a wave three here, and I'm not very good at drawing with a mouse, I'm not using my pen today, but if we have this culminating wave three, wave three's got to be above wave one, one. Secondly, the entire range of wave three 
cannot be smaller than this $200 range. So when we take a look at the market move culminating at this last retracement culminating at 1241 route here, you've got 1241, 1341, 1441. The market by actual definition of an Elliott wave would have to culminate somewhere around 1440 at the conclusion of the fifth wave. So not only would it have to breach this particular top, it would also have to have a move that was at least equal to because a definition of a third wave, according to R.N. Elliott, is it cannot be the shortest of any of the impulse waves. Here it comes. Uh, so traders, rains, winds really, really picking up. This will be a shortened edition of the weekend review. What we will do is we will put out a, another a small video after the market concludes and the rains pass us. However, we are now looking at a two-day chart. It's a big picture chart in which we can kind of put what we've been talking about in perspective. These are our major counts, a major one, a major two. Our major third wave, which was a dynamic wave, that's what took us to the top of this market. Following that, we went into a major fourth. That, I believe, concluded at the second of these double bottoms. So this is where, beginning of uh, 2014, all of the charts that we have previously looked at are focusing on. Now, when we look at it in that way, what you can see here is this is our wave one, this is our wave two. These are intermediates within the major count. And as I said, I believe that we're currently in the beginnings of our made, uh, intermediate, excuse me, an intermediate third. Now, the intermediate third is going to have a sub count behind that. And that's really what we have been focusing on. But to give you an idea in terms of a big picture, this is how all of that fits into the puzzle that we'll look at right now. So now that we return back to our daily chart, you should have more of a, a good feel for what we're looking at when we talked about the fact that this beginning of 2014 up to now is really the beginnings of something that I believe could be a pretty, pretty dramatic move in the market. Now, that $200 rally that started, this is that and now, again, these are intermediate counts found within the majors that we just looked at, but an intermediate one, I believe we've completed our intermediate two. I believe that we are now in our intermediate three. That would be the big picture. We just talked about the fact that if we look at the range of one, compare that to the range and the starting point of three, that will have to terminate at some point at around 1440 or above. Now, in the interim, we've got a sub count behind that. Let me go ahead and change my color so it becomes a little bit easier to digest. So within the sub count that we're looking at, we have had our wave one, one, two, three, four, five up. We have had our wave two. Again, wave two was subdivided into A, B, and C. We are currently in our wave three of three, of five, meaning this is a major fifth, all of this together, intermediate one, intermediate two, intermediate three, sub count behind that. So when we take a look at the activity that we're seeing today, we have some profit taking, no doubt, in terms of the straight candlestick pattern. Now realize the market has not closed, so I'm, I'm hesitant to jump at the type of candlesticks that we're looking at. Anything can happen over the next three hours. We could have this market solidly sell off and if it does solidly sell off, it's going to give us one pattern. Right now, it looks very, very much like a shooting star. The reason that it looks like a shooting star is this extreme tail up here at around uh, 1320. Now, lo and behold, if you recall from yesterday's talk, I said that our next real level of resistance has to come in at around 1320. We then have another level of resistance at 1331. That was that prior top. And then this final level of resistance that we could run into is 1345. And of course, that is based on this top. And that's the top of our wave one right in here, which gave us a $200 plus rally. Of course, again, intermediate count one, two, and I believe that we are in wave three. I do believe at any point we could see some weakness. The one thing about an Elliott wave count is that it 
really puts dramatic, dramatic emphasis on the wave one. Wave one becomes a benchmark for pretty much everything else. Wave one, once we have that in place, we say that, okay, wave two should go to about a 61% retracement. You can see that right here. We then say wave three cannot be the shortest of any of the impulse waves, and, and typically it is 138%, 123%, up to 161%, that of wave one. So again, we're comparing it to wave one as our benchmark. Now, wave four is a comparison to wave three because we're saying that once we get three in place, wave four should correct, and the correction is a correction of wave three. And then when we look at wave five, we say that wave five should be about equal to wave one. So as you can see, pretty much all of the comparisons that we look at really are based upon wave one. Why am I telling you this now? Because we're in wave one and without that in place, I really cannot tell you where I'm going to forecast the top of this uh, particular wave to come. All I am able to tell you at this point is different levels of resistance that we could run into. Again, 1320, 1331, and 1335. Maintain your long position in gold. We will be looking to move our stop up very, very early next week. So what about silver? Well, we've been really, really gun shy. And let me update this chart very quickly because I can see that it's not taking into account all of, uh, all of the candles. I knew that it was missing one in the middle right in here, but... The one thing that we can say is we got this piercing line as the market came down, goes and touches 61%. We didn't get a confirming candle yesterday. As the market traded higher last night, I thought we might see some kind of confirmation, and we do have a solid, solid positive move in the equities markets, which really tells me that there is a potential for silver to start moving back to the positive side because it runs in sympathy with the equities markets. If the equities markets are strong, traders, it's an industrial metal, so you're going to get that component finding support. You can see this little bounce right here. This is the uh, CCI, but nonetheless, we have been flat. We remain flat over the weekend in silver. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. We will talk to you on Monday, God willing, because we've got another hurricane, Julio, which is set right behind the current one that we're dealing with, and that's really scheduled to hit the islands on Sunday. So hopefully, as long as we have electricity, we'll be back with you. If we don't, we have made contingency plans to get information to you. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.